uh, I, I know it's um, morning time, but just for the sake of this video, uh, it's Saturday afternoon around 1.30 p.m. And this is the famous or infamous confession room or reconciliation, we call it. Um, and the name of the confessor uh, is yours truly, Father Patrick J. O'Doherty, holy, handsome, and humble. Uh, Father Paul, my associate, God bless him, uh, has a confession room on the other side. And they're coming to confess. We priests, <clears throat> we priests are under the, uh, <clears throat> the seal of confession. Excuse me. We are to die rather than ever break the seal. You come into confession and you confess whatever you confess. And then the, the law comes in 10 minutes later, puts a gun to my head and said, tell us what Mr. Brown said. Mr. Brown drives through town in a limo. Tell us what he said in his confession. And I said, sir, no, we'll shoot you. We'll shoot them. Never has it been known, as far as I know, that a priest any place has broken the seal of the confessional. You ready to go in now? Okay, come along. Um, there are options here. As a lot of men and women choose to kneel down here and confess their sins. They can't see me on the other side or any priest, and I can't see them. But they'll generally start off and they'll say, Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Uh, it is six months since my last confession, or I went to confession last week, and here are my sins. And then others have the option of coming round on this side. And, um, and you see there's a chair here, and there's also a chair for myself. And this is the stole that I'm to wear. It's a symbol of authority. Like if you, uh, if the police stop you, you know, um, they'll have their uniforms, they'll have their badge. That's the symbol of their authority. But this is the symbol of the authority of Jesus Christ. It is by his authority that any priest absolves you from your sins in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now the, the penitent sits here and the priest hits, sits here. So I can hear on this side, and again, face to face over here. Now again, to just uh, for your own well-being, please, um, confession is not something that the Catholic Church made up. It comes directly from the Lord Jesus Christ. And here it is um, in the Bible, and it's... Chapter 20, verse 19. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the day of the resurrection, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus was dead. He was dead and buried. And they were afraid that what happened to Jesus could happen to them. Jesus came and stood among them in spite of the locked doors. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side where the wound was. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. I think they were too astounded to answer him. They're looking at somebody risen from the dead, and he says it to them twice, Peace be with you. When God is speaking, he generally says things twice, like he says, Moses, Moses, put off your shoes. Then he says to them, as the Father sent me, as the Father sent Jesus, so am I sending you. And after saying this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit the holy breath of God. Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. 
So your average person then, uh, when they come to confession, they can confess anything, you know, like if they've broken any of the Ten Commandments, uh, dishonored God, uh, blasphemed Jesus, uh, committed adultery, uh, committed any perverse sins like homosexual involvement, uh, robbery, destroying your neighbor's reputation. Um, get it all out. Get it all out. It's a kind of an exodus, an exorcism thing you're doing. So you confess your sins. And then watch what happens next then. Um, I'm remembering the old rite for a moment. God the Father of mercies through the death and resurrection of his Son has reconciled the world to himself and sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. Through the ministry of the church, may God give you pardon and peace. I absolve you from all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. By his authority, by the authority of Jesus, I absolve you from your sins. Um, I've seen two miracles over the years in the confessional. Um, and they're very secondary, but I'd just like to tell you about them anyway. Uh, one time I was coming to the confessional. Now, generally, every Saturday afternoon, uh, we spend, Father Paul and I spend up to two hours in the respective confessionals, and every Thursday as well. And I'm always available every day for confession. You know, when people want to come to Christ in the distressing disguise of the priest. So one day I was walking into this room years ago and there was a line of people outside and this man was in a wheelchair whom I knew and he couldn't speak. He had advanced Alzheimer's and his wife was pushing him into the confessional and being a thick Irish man, I said, my God, what's she doing this for? He can't speak, he can't confess anything. Anyway, I came in, sat down. He was sitting opposite me here. And as God is my witness, he looked at me straight in the face, the man who couldn't speak, and started off, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It is 45 years since my last confession. And then he told something that happened back then that he'd never been able to confess. And then at the end of confession, may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you by his authority, absolve you from all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So God loosed his tongue so he could confess his sins or else, or else he gave me the gift of hearing in tongues. And he was, something was going on. But anyway, the man was healed of his sins primarily and I saw him a year later in the nursing home. He could still speak, which was lovely. The other one I didn't see at all, uh, a lady who's a speech therapist. I, I, a year later, she tells me about it. She comes in, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I have whatever months since my last confession, uh, confesses her sins. And again, the priest, may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you. By his authority, I absolve you from all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Gets up, walks out, don't know who she was, nothing at all about her. And the next person comes in and confessions go on all afternoon or a good part of the afternoon. A year later, uh, she, she, and not directly, she, she uh, picked up the phone to tell me, don't know who her name still she told me when she came to the confessional that day that she had terminal throat cancer. I didn't know, she never mentioned it. She also mentioned that as she was walking out of the confession room that day, a warm sensation filled her throat. And then she got home and she went in at home and she said, hi, mom. And, and mom, mom immediately spun around and said, what happened to you? She was different. Her voice was different and she told me subsequently that she had been going up to Gainesville for again I didn't know her and still don't um, to have her throat cancer inoperable treated in, in Gainesville and they were monitoring her every month or two months 
and she had an appointment with them the following Friday. And she went to Gainesville and the cancer was completely, totally, absolutely gone. Now, the important sin was she received absolution for her sins. This was the secondary miracle. Remember in the gospel where Jesus said to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven? And the priest objected to Jesus saying, your sins are forgiven. And Jesus said to them, why do you think such evil in your heart? Which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say, pick up your mat and go home to prove to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralyzed man, get up. Well, Jesus said to these two penitents, he healed this one's cancer as a secondary miracle to having her sins forgiven. And the man was able to talk so he could confess. Amen. And oh, a lovely thing, the seal of confession. I'm so grateful for it. And the other lovely thing is um, I remember nothing that happens in the confessional. It's a gift I was given from the very beginning. It's just all lifted away from me. But I am the instrument of Christ's forgiveness. Amen. Amen.